Survivor is a show that consists of main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. Maybe you have heard this before as the best characters can be some of the most hated villains and also some of the worst characters can be the most hated as well. As Boston Rob once infamously said, I'm a villain? Well, it's all in perspective, I guess. It's how you see it. Villains generally work best when we can't stand to see them on our screens for various reasons and are best when they get their comeuppance. But the worst are when they ruin a season or are just not fun in any capacity. I asked you all on my community tab which villains you loved and which you hated and I compiled the data to create this top 10 list. So here is the Survivor fandom's top 10 most hated villains. Number 10. Abby Maria of seasons 25 and 31 is someone who has become more beloved over time due to accidentally whacking Scoopin' in the head with a coconut, which is why she isn't higher on this list. However, watching Abby Maria play Survivor is hard to fully understand without realizing that she just thinks differently from most people, but the show does not paint it in this way. The show paints her as crazy. Her perspective is different and that leads to many moments that has us as an audience wondering, what is she doing? Even though to her, it makes perfect sense. I believe a prime example of this is her friendship with RC, seeming to be a strong connection right out the gate, which includes RC sharing with Abby the idle clue she finds. But then right after that, it doesn't take very long for Abby to go full villain and turn on RC for something she doesn't even do. I just don't know if I can trust RC all the way because I feel that she's getting a little bit too close to Mike. I catch them whispering a little too much. I catch them switching conversations when I walk in. If she screws me over, that's it, she's that to me. To me, Mike is like my father. Well, it doesn't matter if you like Mike or not, you're playing the game. I thought Abby was my number two. I thought she can handle it, but she can go off like that. And that really makes me nervous. She thinks that I could be making sub-alliances and I'm not. I wouldn't lie to you. I haven't lied to you and I you have no reason to think that I would lie to you. I am your friend. Me too. But if you don't want me, you're dead. Seriously, you are done. done. Even if Abby is right, the show never gives us anything aside from Abby's perspective, which is being painted as unreasonable. Abby does continue to do this all season, and if she perceives anyone as having turned on her, they're dead to her. That seeming unwillingness to work things out combined with her also seeming unreasonableness makes her the perfect person to be that villain of season 25. But when Abby's brought back for season 31, she fully embraces how she was painted before and amps it up to 11. She acts more ruthless, more unforgiving, and plays it off like, hey, I'm the normal one. Some find this fun, but no one can deny that Abby is anything but a great villain for the show. Eighth person voted out the second wow. member yes! of our jury. Savage. Savage? Chopper spoken. You made it to the jury. Oh, right back at you. By the way, thanks for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Did you know I made this video way back in September of 2022? Well, for only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make like this one and get them all months early. So come on over to Patreon to support Once Upon an Island and get to have a say in what I make. Thank you for your support. Number nine. Have you ever met someone who lacks self-awareness in a way that is so, so annoying. That's Philip Shepard of seasons 22 and 26, as he has this sense of ego that pervades his every thought and action in a way that I'm sure Survivor had to do very little work to make sure he is perceived as a villain by us as an audience. His infamous feud with Francesca in both seasons he plays is played off like a joke somewhat, and truly, Philip could be perceived as funny in both of his seasons only for a short while, but then he is given far too much airtime in season 22 and you're just waiting, hoping and praying that he will get voted out. And with that, he'll learn that maybe he wasn't as great of a player as he thought he was. Francisca and Christina asked me to cast my vote for Rob. That is not true. Excuse me. I asked you to, to vote me, for Rob. Excuse me, I didn't interrupt you while you spoke. I want to finish what I was saying. Christina, did I ask him to Excuse vote for me. Rob? Absolutely not. Excuse Absolutely me. not. Excuse me. You are a crazy person. Jeff, I'm a former special agent. My vote tonight will be for Francesca. 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 You and French Quest, French. Francesca. Francesca. Hey. But you know, Philip has completely learned how to pronounce my name, so. Francesca, Francesca, Francesca. You're welcome. Did you work on saying her name? 
No, actually, I could, in fact, say her name before, but during the course of that tribal council, there were certain things that were said, and rather than use an explicative, I decided to say Francesca. No, I'm quite rational, and guess what? I was going to vote for Fran Francesca, because that meant... Francesca. Francesca. I'm, my mouth is dry, and I have had a, I've been getting treatment for it, so... But no, he actually makes it to the end and gets second place. It's especially crazy because, to us as an audience, we know he was dragged to the end to be Boston Rob's goat, but Philip thinks he earned the second place victory. He also walks around in pink underwear, nicknames his alliance Stealth R Us, and is very serious about it. It's like hanging out with that one kid who takes everything way too seriously, like, we're just trying to chill, but... Oh no, this is serious business, that's Philip, but like all the time. He also infamously gets into a fight with Brandon Hance that helps taint the entire pre-merge of season 26, but the saving grace is that finally, in season 26, he is given his comeuppance. Like I said before, Philip always starts off fun and quickly deteriorates every season he's in. With me in control of it, like to a certain extent the way I've tried to play it right now, I told you, you were going to get above the slot when you finished last time, but you don't slap the gift horse. I've always been annoyed at Philip. I've listened to him, I've kissed his butt. I apologize as a man. Hey man, I'm sorry. I hope we're okay. Am I still? No, you're not. In my book, you're persona non grata. Like, still wants to get me voted out? We squashed this. I thought we figured this out yesterday. Yeah. Everybody actually doesn't like you. Well, guess what? Guess what? Then they'll vote me out. They'll vote me out okay. before they well, vote you out. Hey, Phil! Here's a reason to vote me out, you little Give yourself some He's not gonna to disrespect me anymore. Number eight. Dan Foley of season 30 is smart, but like the previous two players on this list, he lacks self-awareness in the moment and seemingly talks without a filter, which doesn't help him when he looks, oh, so sexist at times. This leads us to a player who is painted as loud, obnoxious, sexist, and crazy by the show. He compares Shirin being bullied to himself and how he was an adopted child. It never makes any sense. People say many nice things about him afterwards, but Jeff makes sure to put the kibosh on that by making sure his season ends with audiences not having fond memories of Dan, but by thinking that he is exactly who the show portrayed him to be. When you listen like a girl, you just smile and nod. Yes, dear, I understand. Yeah, your mother's off. <laughs> Close your mouth, open your ears. She loves to play the victim. My scenario really isn't much different than hers. So you had domestic violence in your upbringing? I'm an adopted child. Do you have a prejudice against women? I do not have a prejudice against women. Maybe she's an idiot savant. I'm leaning more toward the idiot side. Somebody slap this woman. For the love of God, just slap her and shut her up. But the black mark against Dan is from the story's perspective, as this season's good guy and eventual winner Mike decides at the last second to make a strategic move and then changes his mind. This annoys everyone in the moment, but people generally move on from this, but not Dan. From that moment until the end of the season, he takes this personally. And there's almost nothing worse storytelling wise than for a villain to be directly opposed to the hero character while also painting the villain as unreasonable. Mike does turn this around by the end, but Dan is so full of himself at the same time. Mike. Huh. Oh, Mike. Colby Donaldson proved that just because you win immunities doesn't mean you get to win this game. You're right. You got to get to the end with the right people and you gotta put the right people on the jury. And Mike, you didn't care about the jury. All you cared about was making it to the end. Well, let me tell you, brother, you damn well better care about us tonight, cause there's no necklace to save your ass tonight. Thank you. Number seven, if Scott's comeuppance in season 32 wasn't oh so poetic, he would be higher up on this list as a hated villain. While I can see positive attributes in almost everyone who is lower on this list, even though those attributes are heavily outweighed by the negative, Scott has almost no redeeming qualities on Survivor. He is brash, rude, and at times, sexist. Him and Jason go hand in hand in a way that makes them absolute jerks to everyone. When things don't go his way, ho, oh, he acts like a baby. Like in the post-merge when he decides to sabotage everyone. It's time to try to make life as miserable as possible for everybody else. Took the machete, took the axe, went back up in the jungle a little bit, and we hid the tools. Certainly I'm not gonna just lay down and say, hey, good game. The only thing we can do right now is fight, and so we're going to fight. And if fighting means making everybody else miserable in the process, 
That's what I'm doing. Now, do you know where the machete is? Axe and machete gone. No machete? Sabotage. What are the hungry? I think that would be the I think that would be the, that is so mature. But despite Scott constantly treating pretty much everyone with a lack of respect while being rude and thick-headed, it is all made up for when he gets his comeuppance. At this point, him, Jason, and Ty have two idols, and if combined, they can create a super idol that can be played after the votes are read. Now, Jason and Scott have been treating Ty with so little respect, despite the fact that Ty is with them. They are an alliance, and yet Ty is treated like the little kid brother who's being dragged along. So at that tribal council, when Scott is voted for, Ninth person voted out the fourth member of our jury, Scott. Wow. Scott, the tribe spoke. Number six, Corinne from seasons 17 and 26 is mean harsh and doesn't care about your feelings. She is upfront about this and her abrasiveness actually does endear some viewers. And when she is someone's friend, she is their friend, but it's really clicky. Like she creates a click and if you're not in it, no, oh, she doesn't like you. You're her enemy. Corinne talks smack about pretty much everyone and without any remorse is just cruel. She likes being this and that makes it even worse. She embraces it. This isn't a matter of editing or storytelling. This is Corinne in almost every episode of Survivor. However, what seals her fate as a villain comes at the end of season 17 when I think she makes a speech at Final Tribal that pretty much everyone will never forget. Susie, I have one question for you. And if you can answer yes to this question, I will give you my million dollar vote. If you get the money, will you agree to have your vocal cords removed? <laughs> Sugar, you are an unemployed, uneducated leech on society. And the only thing I would vote to give you is a handful of antidepressants so that no one else has to be subjected to your constant crying anymore. And maybe if you got some, then it would seem a little more sincere when you are crying about your dead father. And I would argue she would be higher up on this list if she didn't actually become nicer in her follow-up Survivor season. Though, she is still Corinne there, just not as mean. I'm gonna be a total bitch and I'm gonna get rid of who I have to get rid of and I'm gonna hurt people's feelings and I'm gonna laugh when people cry and I'm gonna own it. Number five, John Dalton, AKA the self-proclaimed Johnny Fairplay of seasons seven and 16 is where this list jumps up to a whole new level. Fairplay is many things, but no one can argue that he is a villain and probably the most hated castaway by Jeff Probst. Frankly, I have never seen Jeff trash one player over and over and over again outside of the game of Survivor like I have seen him trash Fairplay. Is it because Fairplay thinks he is the smartest player ever? Is it because he pulls off the infamous dead grandma trick? Is it because he constantly fights with others, namely Sandra? Could it be because he shows up to tribal council drunk? All of that and more. It seems pretty obvious that, that the three of them have formed some kind of bond because, you know, all three share inferiority complexes to that of a man. The fact that Sandra jumped ahead of me on the food chain pisses me off to no end. While Fairplay does return in season 16 and basically quits in episode one, which only tarnishes his survivor legacy and makes Jeff go, ha, see, I told you Fairplay sucked. Nothing can top how he treats Lil all game like a child and like someone he can manipulate only to be in the final immunity challenge against her and Lil, you want to make a deal right now? No, sir. You're crazy. My daughter wants to be a doctor. Do you understand? Do how John, don't talk to me. Do you understand how the deals work, Lil? Shut up. Lil, who do you want to go against in the final two? How many people have you screwed over, John? Everyone in the game. You know what? I do aerobics. Okay. My knees are great. Okay. My ankles are great. Okay. These are called squats. Okay. And aerobics. All right. John is out. Woo! 14th person voted out of the tribe. Johnny oh Fairplay. My. John, the tribe has spoken. Number four, you know this list is gonna get worse when uh, Russell Hance of seasons 19, 20, and 22 is this low on it. Many hate Russell for simply dominating season 19, not just strategically, but in the story edit as well. For some reason, the show pretty much hid the winner and at every point tried to make Russell look better than he really was. In a binge watch of this season, it works, but one week at a time for the months back when this season first aired must have been rough if you wanted to be invested in anyone 
but Russell. But that is not enough to make a villain. Russell also trash talks people behind their backs, lies about being in Hurricane Katrina, is happy that someone gets medically evacuated, and burns a tribe mate's socks just for fun. But I think the most infamous confessional he has all season is this one in episode one of season 19 that really sets the tone for Russell. My strategy is to be able to have a secret alliance with each one of these dumb girls. I got alliance with the dumb short hair blonde, the even dumber long hair blonde, and the dark haired girl. I like to call it my dumb ass girl alliance. I told them exactly the same thing, and I believe they're just gullible enough to believe it. But how does someone like this not land higher on the list? Simple. He is entertaining beyond all belief and his supporters are hardcore in support of him, obviously. People either love or hate Russell. Hate is usually the sentiment, but there are those who love him. And there are those who only saw him the first time he played and still remember him to this day, despite having not seen his season in 13 plus years. People still think that Russell should have won his seasons. But yeah, his ruthless aggression burns the jury in back-to-back -back seasons. So despite the show putting him in our face almost 24 seven and him reaching the end two times, he still loses the game and it isn't close. I will say that his third appearance on Survivor is the icing on the cake as his tribe throws immunity to get him out and Russell is still has this massive sense of ego after he just got caught not being the good guy that he was pretending to be and the show works overtime to make him look dumb. Russell there wasn't no hidden immunity clue in that bag was he? Maybe there was. There was no clue in there. Russell. Russell. You either with me or against me. We just want to know if there was one in there. You say you ain't got it. I ain't got it. But I don't like how you coming at me. Oh, I was just asking you. Was I'm it in there? Hey, I'm just saying. I don't like how you coming at me. Oh, you don't? No. I'm just asking I'm for just you I'm just letting you know that. Okay. Okay. What the hell was that? Ralph went off. He said he knows how to play this game. He's like, I know how to play this game too. Really? This is my game, sucker. First vote, Ralph, Russell. 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 Third person voted out of Survivor Redemption Island. Russell. Russell. The tribe has spoken. Number three. The top three in this list is truly the turd in the cereal bowl. Brian Heideck of season five commits the biggest sin of being a villain. You see, you can do all the worst crap on Survivor, but if at the end of the day you lose, then people, for the most part, can move on. But here's the kicker. Brian doesn't lose. He wins and will forever be the black eye of the Survivor franchise in terms of winners. Anyone who praises him only praises his gameplay. He is never fun to watch as a character as he lies all season and seemingly cannot be genuine with anyone he interacts with. But it's not entertaining. When his wife sends a video for them all to watch, we see that he's already rich, which is made worse when you consider how we've seen him act all season up to this point, combined with him being a used car salesman. So you know that he's rich off of being a used car salesman and it makes you go, yeah, wow, he has to be ripping people off. He fits that cliche so well that after watching him play, I feel as if I need to go and take a shower immediately. When you know where everyone's heads at, it gives you that much more control. It gives you that much more confidence. It gives you a little bit more, uh, a more useful ammunition. I've got three pieces of ammunition I can use. One, I've got my trump card, Jan, Grandma Jan, she's disposable. Number two, I've got my loyal and trustworthy soldier, Helen, my good friend, Uncle Clay. I'm just sitting back. So there's my three. There's my three ends. One disposable, the loyal soldier, oops, and a good friend. <laughs> Number two, Colton Cumby of seasons 24 and 27 is something. He really has two major incidents that almost no one can forget, and I don't think I need to talk about anything else but these two incidents to paint the picture of why no one ever defends Colton and says he's actually a fun villain. In season 24, the men just got done winning immunity and back at camp. Bill tries befriending Colton to help them reconcile their differences and work together moving forward. Colton says, screw you, and... I absolutely hate Bill. I hate his voice. I hate his jokes. He's not funny. Like, you know, I'm a stand-up comedian. Shut up. Get a real job. You are disgusting. I hate him. I want his head on a platter. I want him gone. Maybe I should go to those girls and say, do y'all want to trade? We'll go to Shabba Council tonight because we have a lot more to deal with than y'all. I've never heard of anyone doing this. So then he somehow tricks everyone, and I do mean everyone, into doing this incredibly stupid move. And at Tribal Council proceeds to be unintentionally racist and 
privileged in a way that is incredibly hard to watch, more so than it should be. And yes, I did go to a private, like all white school, but I do have like African American people in my life. Who? <laughs> my housekeeper. So, I mean, like, that just put us on a weird vibe from day one. But she's like a world. member of our family. Like, she's... A paid member. Yes. I mean, you know, yeah, she doesn't work for free. The problem I have with Bill is that he's poor, pitiful me. I'm poor. Like, I don't associate with people like that in the real world, and I'm sure as hell not going to associate with people like that out here. Bro, you haven't worked an honest day in your life or had to actually go out and get a job. Don't judge me. I don't judge you. So don't look down at me, don't call me names, and for the love of God, I work with people and for no one. You got that? Whatever, Bill. Then, two episodes later, Colton leaves the game due to medical reasons when it seems like things aren't going his way and the show paints this as a quit. They really don't want us to have any sympathy for him at all. So when he is for some reason asked to play again in season 27, a baffling choice to be sure, quickly things are not going his way again, and... And now, Colton, you're crying. What are you crying about? I don't want to be here anymore. Meaning you're quitting? Again, the first time you feigned an appendicitis. Turns out you didn't have it. My back's against the wall, and when my back is against the wall in this game, I turn into the person I was in one world, and I don't want to be that person. You turned into that person before your back was against the wall. Is that how it goes, Colton? If things don't go your way, let's just stop. I don't, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, the show paints him as a two-time quitter and Jeff hasn't been this mad since Fairplay was drunk at Tribal Council, but on the plus side, his quit is what inspires Mike Holloway to submit to the show and play, so take that as you will. Number one. For the first time in this channel's history, I'm putting a warning here to actually leave the video. If you don't want to watch anything related to sexual assault, then click off here. That's what the warning's about. No worries if you do though, there's so many other videos I've made that do not touch on this topic at all. But let's get into it. Dan Spilo of season 39 is the most hated villain on this list, and it isn't close, believe it or not. He not only single-handedly tanks a season, but he clearly should have been pulled from the game much, much earlier than he does. But he isn't. He has the honor or dishonor of being the only ejected player in the history of Survivor. The incidents he is involved in causes so many changes for the show post season 39 that counting all of them would require a whole separate video. But let's hit all the major lowlights for Dan. Starting in episode one, when he has been touching Kelly far too much in a way that makes her uncomfortable, so she asks him, please stop. I have to be open to. I'm not thinking, I have to be like, oh God, she doesn't like me because I yeah. can't hug her the way Janet can. Like, yeah. I, I get yeah. it. Yeah, and that's not like what it is all. And like, hopefully over the course of these right. 39 days, yes. like, well, it'll get better. Now. We're playing Survivor, where it's about fitting and connecting. But Dan being a touchy person, it's a lot. We kind of talked about it, and it's a really, really good conversation, but I feel like Dan's lack of spatial awareness, I think, is going to hurt him in the game. That could have been the end of it. A simple learning of a lesson, but no. What makes this worse is how the season proceeds as normal with Dan being a regular non-purpled character until the merge hits, and then all of a sudden the show breaks the fourth wall and paints Dan in a light that left every live viewer with their jaws on the floor as it happened. I would know I was there. But then one night, like, the hands were wandering. Even yesterday, he was like, took my hair and like, went like this, like, taking little, I'm like, don't touch my face. Like I lay awake, his arm smothers me, and I feel like someone like wiggling my toes. It's just inappropriate touching. As soon as he had his arms on Janet, he was good. So like I didn't yeah. get touched at all. Yeah. It was great. Like, the first few nights that we were here, I was next to him, and he would have his hand right here. Oh, God. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was looking to see how much sand there was. My hands clean. Ah, oh, your hands are not clean. Oh my Dad. God! I just scrubbed them in the water. Eighth person voted out, the second member of our jury. Kelly. Yeah, I'm to that Kelly, the tribe has spoken. What are you feeling right now? Is, is the bottom line we're not gonna let this go? Since it won't be let go, right, clearly, Jeff, right? It won't be Dan, let go. You're right, I will never let it go. Keep in mind, these are just snippets. This stuff goes on for so much longer and has massive consequences across the board. So you might think at this point that the show would purple Dan, so we basically forget about him existing since they have done this to other players for committing far lesser offenses. But 
They don't. He isn't pulled from the game and remains a presence all the way through the finale until fan favorite Elaine is voted out when we next see... A decision has been made and Dan will not be returning to the game. He won't be coming back to camp. He won't be on the jury. He's gone. It takes until the finale for Survivor to do something, and wow. I wasn't there, I can only judge based on what the show shows me, but what could have been a solid middle of the road season is tanked so hard, and it's all due to the actions of one player and the show's handling of him. After this season, they do make some big on-island rule shifts so that this never happens again, but it happening and everyone taking so long to correct it, this deep into the show's life, by the way, makes Dan the worst villain on this list. So which villain in Survivor history is your least favorite? Comment below and let me know. Anyways, thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.